As I was meditating this evening, this Sunday, this week, the Lord was putting much things in my mind, and um, and I was in my studies, and God wanted me to preach to you this mo- uh, this Sunday uh, from the book of Exodus, and, uh, and that'll be from Exodus, and uh, another word for Exodus is what. Another word for Exodus. What does Exodus mean? Huh? Sorry? Moving from one place to another. Another word for Exodus? What is Exodus? Popcorn? <laughs> what? Deliverance. Amen? Amen? Exodus means deliverance. Okay? How many of you are delivered from your sin today? How many of you are redeemed from hell today? Uh, So, book of Exodus is a beautiful book. And if you would read uh, so much to learn from that and so much of typology uh, from the book of Exodus. If you study, if you are interested in typology, I love studying typology. And uh, last Sunday we studied based on that, a radical faith, a radical Christian faith. And we saw in Abraham and Isaac sacrifice. And um, I love studying typology, and uh, and this book of number Exodus is beautiful. But in this chapter, there is nothing much of typology. Uh, but there is so much to apply it to our life. Okay, if I would ask you a question today, you know, everybody is going to say yes, I do. But if you would just listen to the message completely today, and then you ask for yourself. Then you may still say, yes, I do, just to convince and comfort yourself, okay? But if you would just allow the Holy Ghost to speak to you, then the Holy Spirit will say, no, you do not. But you will just try to overpower the Holy Ghost and try to say, I do. The Holy Spirit says, you do not. Okay, so if I would ask you a question, how many of you, don't raise your hands, because if you would raise your hands, I will consider you to be a hypocrite. Okay, so don't raise your hands, so let me just take it for granted that everybody is fine this morning over here. How many of you really love the Lord so very much? Everybody loves God? Oh yeah. Okay, everybody loves God. You go to the Roman Catholic Church today and ask, how many of you love God? Everybody say, hey, I love God. Okay, I love God. You go to Jehovah Witnesses, you go to the Mormons, you go to the Seventy Adventists, you go to the Baptist Church, you go to the Methodists and the Pentecostal, you go to all the teast and calls. Okay, what happened? Everybody says, I love God and I love more than you. Let's have a test today of the love that you have for God. Let's have a test today. And my prayer today is, okay, as much as I preach to you, it's a preaching to my, to my life too. And I want the Holy Ghost to speak to you as I will be used as a vessel to bring forth God's Word. Now, for the reading of God's Word today, I want you to turn your Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 5. And I will uh, uh, encourage you to take notes today, as always, and, and write the points that I will be giving, so that you will think about it, okay, and you will, um, and you will meditate on it, and, and I pray that the Holy Ghost will encourage you and, uh, and edify you this morning, and even warn you, okay. And uh, so, Exodus chapter 5, and for the reading of God's word, would you please stand, and we shall read. You follow me as I read for you, and uh, I have, I'm going to preach the whole chapter today, from verse 1 through verse 23, but uh, just for the reading's sake, lack of time, I'm going to read a couple of verses, okay, and then we will go verse by verse uh, while I'm preaching. And the word of God says in verse 1, And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice? 
to let Israel go, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Turn your Bible to the same chapter, but the verse number 18, uh, 17 and 18. But he said, Ye are idols, ye are idol. Therefore, he say, Let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Verse 18. Go therefore now and work, for there shall no straw be given you, yet shall he deliver the tale of bricks. May the Lord add many more blessings as we meditate in God's word. Shall we call the Lord in prayer? My Father in heaven, O oh God, as I preach to your congregation today, I want to preach to myself also. So that as I allow this message to put your people into test of their spiritual condition, may I test myself in my spiritual condition. God, may I speak only what you want me to speak, O oh God. If it's going to offend, it's because you want them to be offended. If it is going to edify, it's, it's because you want them to be edified and encouraged. So may your people open up their hearts and mind and ears that they may listen to the preaching of your word. And as this word will be preached, I pray that thou will bind every spirit that would try to take the seed of the word of God from the hearts of this soil that will be sowed today. The God of heaven, I pray that thou will fill me with thy Holy Ghost. And give me the words of utterance. And, O Lord, may I be covered behind thy shadows, so that Jesus Christ may be glorified. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Exodus chapter 5. Here, when we read this chapter, uh, we, when we read certain things, what we found is, here, the people of Israel have uh, become... Uh, huge, they have become great, okay? Uh, they have become many now. The population of the people of Israel have become many and stronger. And now the man of God, Moses and Israel, I mean Moses and Aaron, has come into the palace or to the chamber of the Pharaoh and is saying, Let my people go, and that's what God says. Okay, so he's saying God told uh, to tell you that let the people of Israel go and that they may offer sacrifice and worship God. And then Pharaoh says, hey, hey, because you are idle, you want to go and worship God. So what? What he says, go therefore now and work for their shall no straw be given you, yet shall he deliver the tale of bricks. You can sit there this morning as I'm preaching and say, because I'm preaching to each one of you, okay? So there's nothing uh, of things to hide. You can sit there and say, brother, you can say whatever you want. I am just going to be what I am. Now that is your problem. It's not my problem, Okay. Oh, brother, you can just keep preaching. I'm not going to obey. Okay, but that's your problem again, and it's not my problem. My calling is to bring God's word. My office is as an elder. That's my qualification. To preach God's word. As a pastor, to feed the sheep. It is up to you whether you will accept this message in reverence to God's word, because this chapter is as much inspired as John chapter 3 verse 16 is inspired. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, I encourage you not to think any negative when I preach this message, but I pray that you will speak and pray to God and say, Lord, speak to me. And as we saw in Psalm 139 today, the last verse, we saw Lord, uh, you know, the psalmist is uh, telling God, um, And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. 
So a Christian ought to be always praying to God, Lord, check myself. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me to the path of righteousness. Lead me to the path that where you want me to walk. I pray that this would be your prayer this morning as I'll be preaching this message today. Now I want you to understand what I'm preaching today to you is something that most of the Christians will not be very much interested to believe but what I'm preaching is not a book written by some of my favorite preachers. I'm preaching the very King James inspired word of God. Amen. And so I want you uh, to accept the message today with a godly fear and a godly love and a reverence to God. Okay. And so today's message I entitle it as destroying devil's deception. Destroying devil's deception. You see, today in this day and age, Christians, many Christians are living under the deceptions of the devil and thinking that all is well with them. Okay? All is well with them while they are living under the deception of, God, of the devil. This message today in Exodus chapter 5 will show you how there are time again and again that you come under the deception of the devil and yet you think that everything is okay and well with you when it is not exactly well with you. It's only that you are deceived by the devil and you feel everything is okay when actually it's not okay and God has been grieved by your life. And God is not very happy because you don't seem to seek into the word of God and find out what our conditions are and then sit under the preaching of God's word and listen to it as the voice from a prophet crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. If you're going to sit here today and say, Lord, speak to me and let the word of God come to me as a as, as a. Uh, uh, as a prophet that cries into the wilderness. Speak to me as Jeremiah would speak to me today. Uh, God speak to me as Isaiah would speak to me today. Speak to me as John the Baptist would speak to me today. And even speak to me as you would speak to me today. That should be your prayer. Sad and sure. Many Christians are living under the, under the, under, uh, under the deception of the devil. While people think, oh, everything is okay with me. What you find in chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, you find God is giving a command to Moses and Aaron and say, Hey, go to Pharaoh and tell him to set my people go. Let my people go and worship. And afterward Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Let me tell you my friend, if you are saved this morning and if you are born again, you can shout an Amen right now. Amen. And at the same time, if you would just say Amen with that same voice, you also got to know that God has given you, a, a God has given you a calling and your calling is not your personal because you do not belong to yourself anymore. You are now been purchased by the presence precious blood of God, by the precious blood of the Holy Ghost, by the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have been purchased. And as Paul said, you got to be voluntarily submit yourself to God and become a voluntarily slave. And say, Lord, you are mine. I'm here to obey what your word says. That should be your desire and that should be your way of look, looking into the scripture. Your G, God is not calling them for their business. God is not calling them for their personal thing. God is calling them for worship. When God saves you, He saves you for a purpose. He does not save you for your enjoyment. He saves you for His pleasure. Amen. When God created you, He did not create you so that you may live as you want. He created you, the book of Philipp, uh, Revelation and Colossians say, He created you for His pleasure. 
Amen. And so when he saved you, or when God created Adam and Eve, he did not create Adam and Eve just, just to go around and enjoy the garden. He created Adam and Eve that God could have fellowship with man. That's why in the cool of the evening, he comes in the garden to fellowship with Adam and Eve every day. And so just like that, every time God would take some time, come down in the cool of the evening to meet Adam and Eve. Because he loves to have fellowship with people. But the problem is Satan deceived humanity. Or oh, Satan deceived Eve and Eve got deceived. And the blame came on Adam because he was the man. Man, I tell you today. Okay, every man. Look at me, every man. It doesn't matter what your daughter does. It doesn't matter what your son does. It doesn't matter what your mother does. It doesn't matter what your wife does. You are responsible and you are going to go pay a price for what your wife does, for what your mother does, and what your child does. You like it or lump it, I'm standing and preaching the inspired word of God. God is going to ask you to pay for it. God says a man ought to rule his house well. When it says rule means you dominate your house. You say what it is to be done and they obey it. There is no second thought over it. You are called to rule the house. Men, when God created Adam, God told Adam, go and have dominion. Okay, man is called to fight. Man is called to domain everything. Man is called to control everything in this world. But we are living in the world of feministic today. Okay? Who we, uh, uh, there's a call, there's a says today, who has the pent in your house? <laughs> have you heard of that uh, saying? Who has the pent in your house? Which means who is the authority in your house? Okay? And so that's the, that's the saying today. And so, man, you are going to be held responsible. It doesn't matter what your daughter does. It doesn't matter what your son does. It doesn't matter what your wife does. God will judge. But you are the main culprit. And God is going to hold you. Did I say anything wrong? No. You know why? Who deceived Eve? Satan deceived Eve. Who was deceived first? Satan, uh, Eve or Adam? Who committed sin? Adam or Eve? Who is counted responsible now? Sin entered the world because of Eve or Adam? Yes, baby. Because of Adam. God held responsible. God held Adam responsible. Men... Okay, so be very careful. And so what we find here is, here, um, when God saves the people, He saves you for a purpose. Whether you fear God or not, it doesn't matter for me, because I fear God, and I, I love to tell you the truth, that you should fear God, and do what the Bible tells you to do. Okay, and so what the Word of God tells you here is, uh, God, uh, here, God has saved people, God loves to have fellowship with people, God has saved you to worship Him, God has saved you to have fellow, uh, spend time with Him, God has saved you for His pleasure and for His glory, and it is not for your pleasure and not for your glory, but you can have pleasure only in God. Amen. But if your pleasure is diverted for your personal thing, then you are walking in a fool's paradise. And so God loves His people to worship Him and fellowship with Him and spend enough time and more time with Him. That's why God saved you. Otherwise, He could have just said, forget it. Let them go on their way. God saved you for one purpose. And the one purpose is that He might have fellowship with you continually. Not only on earth, but even in heaven. Amen. And so He does not want you to go to hell. So He saved you that He may have absolute pleasure on you. And that He can have an absolute fellowship with you. And if you are not able to give that to what God desires and God de demands... Then you are to be held responsible for it, which you will have to pay a price. And so God loves and uh, people to worship Him. And so God tells him. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, "Thus says the Lord God of Israel: Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me into the world in the wilderness." Okay, now they are not in the wilderness, but God wants them to come out of Egypt, go into the wilderness, uh, go for a long distance, and worship God, and have a feast over there. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? 
Now Pharaoh is the picture of Antichrist. Pharaoh is the picture of Satan. Okay? And so you got to know. Okay? About that. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? Okay? Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Jehovah. So he's trying to challenge, Who is God now? Who is the Almighty? Jehovah. That I should obey His voice to let Israel go? Uh huh. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. You say, I will not let Israel go. I don't know your God. I don't know the Lord. And that's what Satan does. Satan doesn't want you to have the feast for God. Satan doesn't want you to, uh, to worship God. Satan doesn't want you to spend time with God. He doesn't want you to give pleasure to God. He doesn't want you to give glory to God. He doesn't want you to fe have fellowship with God. That is what Satan. And so how does Satan make all these things possible? That is what we are going to see today. That is what, and once we see this, it is yours and my calling to destroy devil's deception. Having heard this message today, if you are not putting the armament of God upon you and destroy the deceptions of the devil, then you are nothing but a rebellious person living on this earth. But I pray that is not your condition of your life. I believe that you love God. And I believe that you will take heed to the message preached today. And I believe that you will love God more than you ought to. And I believe that you will spend time with God more than you ought to. And I believe that you will serve God more than you ought to. Amen. Oh uh, yeah, that tells me. Amen. 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 And so we find here, and they said, verse 3, The God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the desert, and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with a sword. You see, when you are not giving what, God, what belongs to God, then you better understand you will have to pay a price. Here yeah, the people of Israel really understood what will happen if they don't go and, have, and, and, and worship God and have a feast for Him in the wilderness. They know that the God is going to get upset with them. God will not be pleased with them. And it, God told them to do it and they have to do it. So they are telling the God of Hebrews has met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey into the, into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Okay? So if God wants to judge you, he's going to judge you based on the sword of the word of God, the sword of the spirit, the word of God. He will judge you. Tomorrow when you stand before God, God is not going to judge you for the sins that you did. Because your sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ. And He forgave your sin. But He is going to judge you for the works that you do. And you will lose the crowns and the reward. And you say, I don't worry and I don't care about the crown. Man, you, are like, 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 you will be like a toilet cleaner in heaven. Even if, if you are saved and go to heaven. You want to enjoy the journey there. If you are not obeying God's word. And God is going to judge, you, judge your work. Based on the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay? And here they are saying, uh, Lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? He wants to heap up burdens on Christ, uh, believers. He wants to heap up burdens on God's people that they may be totally submerged in the burden that they don't have time for God. Okay? Do you have time for God? Do you spend enough time for God every day? Do you give enough time for God every day? Do you do what the Bible tells you to do? Because that is what God is today looking about. He's not interested in what you think about yourself. He'll say, are you going to obey what I think about yourself? Okay? So you're, they know, they know what it, what it is. They know the burden is more. And if they don't obey what God told them, God will fall upon them with pestilences and, uh, and with the sword. Okay? And so your Pharaoh is saying, no, go get on your burden. Verse 5, And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and he make them rest from their burdens. You see, Satan doesn't want to give you rest. He just wants to give you more work. He wants to give you more burdens. He wants to keep you more busy. And by the way, busy means bondage under Satan's yoke. 
I just made it up, okay? And it is free. I don't charge for it. Bondage under Satan's yoke. Okay, that's what it is. He is, he is putting you, making you busy. Oh, brother, how are you? I'm busy, brother. I'm so much, you know, I just have no time. Just two minutes. Just speak to me. I'm busy. Okay, busy for what? When was the last time you said, I'm busy for God's work? When was the last time you told somebody, it's getting late, I need to go to church? When was the last time you said, I'm busy, I want to go and pass out track? Or when was the last time you said, it's getting time, I have to go and witness to someone. It's getting time for church, I got to go, I'm busy for God. When was the last time you said that? But I hear many times, and you do hear, right? I'm busy with so many things. Okay. But I want you to think about it in this message today. Okay. Busy or what? Satan will keep you busy. And so what he does? He says, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and he make them rest from their burdens. You see, God said, uh, All ye that are labor and are over burden or laden, come to me and I will give you rest. Okay? Jesus has called you and has given you rest. Not, it does not mean you go to sleep. Okay? Rest is not speaking about sleep. Rest is speaking about salvation and deliverance. Amen? Amen. And so your Jesus is speaking about, uh, He's saying, Come and have freely the water, uh, the living water, and come and take everything free, the bread and the water. It's freely given to you that you may have rest. And the people of Israel from Egypt, they were brought, and the God gave them rest in Canaan. And in the same way, you are brought out from the world that's Egypt today. This world is a picture of sin, and God has brought you out and given you a rest and written your name in the Lamb's book of life. Life, that you may have absolute rest in Christ, but yet in spite of having rest in Christ, you still opt to live under the bondage of Satan, because when God gave you rest, you don't understand the importance about your salvation, and you choose yet to live under the bondage of Satan, and you are not having any idea about it, you think everything is fine. But my brothers and sisters, not everything is well with you, but you are under the deception of Satan. Because Satan does not want you to have rest. He wants you to be under burdens. Increase. Increase more. Keep them busy. Make them more busy. Make them work. Give them this job. Give them that business. Give them this education. Keep them there. Make them busy. Make them to do this and do that. Oh, lots of work at home. Lots of work in the garden. Lots of work at there and here. I gotta visit them and we got to visit here. Oh, brother, I won't be able to come today because you gotta do something. Well, be the, join the club of Satan. And Pharaoh commanded the same day. The taskmasters of the people and the officers saying, He shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as heretofore, let them go and gather straw for themselves. Now Satan knows how to increase the work. Satan knows how to keep people's, uh, God's people under bondage. Satan knows how to keep them away from giving time for God. Satan knows how to keep people from fellowshipping with God. Satan knows how to keep people away from the rest what actually God has given. He knows exactly how to keep them under the bondage. Amen. Amen. He shall no more give the people straw to make bring as year to fro. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. So he's saying, hey now, let them go. And let them gather straw and let them make bricks. Don't give them straw. Let them do it all by themselves now. Because of you have them something, now they are becoming idle and they, are want, they want to go and worship God. I don't want them to worship God. I want them to be under my bondage. Now that's what Satan says. You got to be understanding all the time. Okay? You got to, be under, you got to understand and think about all the time. How many of you really think when something comes between God and your other job, how many of you really think, is this exactly what God wants me to do? How many of you really pray about your decisions that you make? How many of you really pray? 
I'm going to pray about this decision and then I will make this decision. How many of you do that? No, I got to do it and I did it. And somebody said and I did it. I want to do it and I did it. But how many of us really spend time and say, Lord, I'm confused about this. I want to make a decision according to the word of God. That it may please you. Lord, is this your will for my life or not? How many of us really pray about it? Now, we know what is the will of God. It's written in the Bible. Yet, we tend to overstep it and do our ways. Now, that's what man exactly wants to do. He never wants to submit to God. Okay? But you must understand, as a saved sinner, you are called for rest with Christ and not for bondage under Satan. Amen? Amen. And so we find here, Satan is uh, uh, increasing their burden and how he increases. Now it makes them, no, 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 I'm not going to buy everything and give it to you. I want you to go and find it for yourself and bring it and make it for yourself. Yeah, the first point will go in verse 8 and 9. What Satan does, you know, to keep you away from God, from fellowship, from worship, from Bible study, from college meetings, from distributing tracts, from reaching out to people and giving time for God. And the tale of the bricks which they did make here to fro, he shall lay upon them. He shall not diminish or thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. God's people wants to go and worship. Satan doesn't want to allow them to go. But in this day and age, it's different. God says, Come and worship. Christian says, No time. Okay, in verse 9, let their more work be laid upon the man, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. The first thing what Satan will do to keep you away from fellowshipping with God and God's people is this. Satan will keep you busy in your work so that you don't have to give time you don't get time to remember to give time to the Lord. Satan will keep you busy in your work. Okay? Now, I didn't say anything. I just read for you from verse 9. Let there more work be laid upon the man, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. So what these people wanted to do is, they wanted to go and worship God and have a feast in the wilderness. Satan doesn't want you to give the glory to God and worship God. And the only way to keep you away from fellowshipping with God and give time with, uh, to God is increase your work. I'm not saying the normal work. We all have to do our normal work. But the, but the moment when the work increases, you better understand when the work increases and makes you to cut off your fellowship with God, you better understand that is not from God. That work and the profit that you get is not from God. It is from Satan. Because when you do your normal work, you give enough time for God. But the moment the work increases, you have no time for God. Because you become busy in your work. And you say, I got to finish this first. I got to finish that first. I got to spend my time there and get it done. I want to go there. I want to please my boss. I want to do this and I want to do that. And we get busy in our work as work increases. Okay? As work increases, it is not from God, but it is from Satan. Okay? Let them more work be laid upon the man, that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. So Satan will keep you busy in the work so that you don't give time for God. He will increase your work. Okay? Because the moment the work is increased, you tend to forget about God's fellowship. You tend to forget spending time for God and with God and with God's people. A lot of people sleeping today, watching movie last night. And the taskmasters of the people went out and their officers and they spake to the people saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw 
Go ye get your straw where you can find it. Yet not out of your work shall be diminished. So he's saying, hey, no. No straw will be given to you. You go and get the straw and make the bricks for yourself. But the work should not be diminished. Which means you got to make the enough bricks that you had to make. Don't let it decrease. You go get the straw. Work. Make the tail of the brick. But let not your work decrease and diminish. And so what do we do? Christians, we got to do it all the time. Over time, over time, over time. Got to do it first. Oh brother, next time. Oh brother, next time. I got to lose this, that. Hello. Let the alarm bell ring in your ears and your mind. That is from Satan. That is not from God. God gives you normal work where you can survive and not starve. When the work increases, which comes between you and your God... It is from Satan. You accept it or not, I just told you from the words. Verse 9. That is exactly how he works. Okay? And the tax, okay, so the tax master came and told them, you know, you go get the straw, let not the work be diminished. Verse 12. This is how Satan will do the second techniques of Satan to keep you away from God. So the people were scared abroad. Oh, so the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. So what Satan does now? He doesn't want you. He is not against your rich. He is not against your riches. He is not against your wealth. He likes you to be so rich so that you may spend more time in your riches and not think about God. Okay? When riches increases, God tells you, not to be puffed up and be pride. Okay, when riches increases, God says, you know, that you got to use it for God's work. That's what you read in Timothy. Okay, where it is. Come to Timothy, let me give you that verse. It says, warn them that are rich. Mm -hmm. Where is that? First Timothy, chapter 6. Verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into, die, fall into temptation and a snare. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Which draw men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not wrong. The love of money. More money, more money, more money, more money, more money. Okay. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Which while some coveted after, they have heard from the faith. They go away from the faith. Now if you go and ask these same people, Hey, do you love God? They will say, I love God. Okay? For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have heard from their faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That's what will happen. Your final thing. Okay. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meek. You know, it, there's a verse that says, Warn them that are rich. You find somewhere? Okay, verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world. That they be not high minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, that they be rich in good works. Wow. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate, not telephone calls. Communicate is not speaking to people. Communicate is speaking about financially distributing for God's work, helping people. Okay? Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of signs falsely so called. This is exactly what God thinks about riches. 
Okay, come back to Exodus chapter 12, 5, verse 12. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. So what is second thing Satan does? The first thing, he will increase your work. The second thing is, Satan will send you far, far from your church that you may stay away. Get it? He's going to scatter you abroad. Oh, we go for holidays. You spend time for God? Good. We all have to take times off. Give time for family. Right? Amen? Amen. But at the same time, you got to give first priority to God. You see that you spend your time in the fellowship of God when you go out for holidays. You see that you gave time, you spend time in the, in the, in, with the Christians on Sunday and not sit at home. You see that you, you, you make your schedule in such a way that you come to your church after enjoying your holidays. Because this is exactly what Satan will do to you. And you think that I'm standing here and just fooling around? No. You are living in a fool's paradise if you're not accepting the message today. Exactly see in verse 12. Can you see that very clearly? Can you see that verse very clearly what Satan does? This is exactly how he works in Christian life. And he deceives people. And Christian will think, oh, I'm so busy, brother. I have to go there. I have to do this. I've got to do that. So much of things to do. Boy, that is exactly what Satan is doing in your life. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of sorrow. So what he does? He sends people away. Hey, you go there to that country. You go there for that state. Do your education there. Go work here. Hey, go to that uh, village. Go to this. Don't stay here. You see that? Go abroad. Scatter abroad. Let them go and work. That they may not have time even to think about God. Does it make sense to you to, in this message today? This is exactly how Satan works. Okay? So the people were scattered abroad. So some, you know, today we, we, we have a lot of people, right? Gone. Gone. But I'm not saying everything is like that. But if you are not prayed and just taken your decisions like that, then that's from, not from God. You got to pray before you make some strong decisions in your life. Pray about it. Okay? So first thing Satan will do, he will increase your work, make you busy. Give you more work. Don't think, oh, my work is so much, I'm making so much money. No, that is not from God. Make money. But God says, you know, in, you increase in godly works and godly things. Okay? Money is not wrong. Remember that. I didn't say money is wrong. The love of the money is the root of all evil. Because the moment you seek after money and run behind money, you stand to give more time for your flesh and for devil and less time for God. Okay? Because he will scatter you. He will put you into something that you have no time for God. And God is jealous about it, and God is grieved about it, and you don't do anything to solve that matter with God. Okay, so the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. Wow. And the taskmaster hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. So he's saying, Give me just that much of. Bricks just like the bricks that you used to do it before. But now they don't have straw. The work is increased. It's gone. Verse 14. This is the third point how he will do it. The third techniques of Satan to keep you away from God's fellowship. And the officers of the children of Israel which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them were beaten and demanded wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making bricks both yesterday and today as you're the fruit. Verse 13 and 14 we find Satan will increase your work that you cannot move to serve God but Satan. Okay? He will increase your work that you don't have time even to move out from that situation so that you can only 
serve Satan. Hear what happened? The work increased. Go get the stubble, but give me the exact number of the bricks that you were making even when we were supplying the stubble to you, the straw to you. So now they have to go get and make enough. So there's no enough time. Now the work is more increased. The job is increased. Everything is increased. Okay, the responsibility has increased. And they know it is the deception of Satan because Satan doesn't want them to go and give a fish to God, to offer the fish and offer the worship and offering to God. Are you aware of it? So Satan will keep you busy so that you don't have to give time for God. Satan will send you far from your church that you may stay away. Satan will increase your work that you can't move to serve God but Satan. Now, then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants. And they say to us, Make brick and behold thy servants are bidden. But the fault is in thine own people. But he said, ye are idle. Uh-huh. <laughs> because when you are free, you have enough time for God. And Satan doesn't want that. When you have your normal work, you have enough time for God. And Satan doesn't want that. But he said, ye are idle. He said two times. You know, you, may, you better understand when it is said, when God says, verily, verily, I say unto you. Two times, which means when giving more importance to it. I say, Martha, oh Martha. Right? It's when he's saying two times, it's something to listen to it. And here even Satan used the same thing. He says, Ye are idle, ye are idle. Therefore you say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. The problem with say with Pharaoh is he doesn't want the people to go and worship God. That is it. The main cause, he doesn't want them to go and worship God. That is the cause. Okay? He's not against their job. He's not against anything. He's not against morality. He's, he's, he's for everything. You want to spend more time for family? Go ahead. You want more time to in your education? Go ahead. You want more time to your work? Go ahead. You want more time to enjoy? Go ahead. Satan helps you in all this thing. One thing he doesn't want you to do is... To make yourself free. To give your time for God. That is exactly he doesn't want you to have. He doesn't want you to have that. Go therefore now. He say, but he said. Ye are idle. Ye are idle. Therefore you say. Let us go and do the sacrifice of the Lord. And now what happened. When Christians go under the bondage of Satan. And you are deceived. Then you say. Brother you don't understand me. I have so much of responsibility to fulfill. I have so much of work to do. I have so much of things to do. You don't understand. I got to prepare everything. These words will come. Once you come under the deception of Satan. And if you don't recognize that. You will not. If you are not spiritual enough to recognize Satan's techniques, you are going to defend yourself by saying, Brother, you don't understand what I'm going through. I really don't understand. But I understand the Word of God and I love to tell you what the Word of God tells you. He will keep you so busy that you will not go and worship God. So Satan will increase the burden and it will make you under bondage. You know what I said? The full form of busy? Bondage under Satan's? Yoke. But God gives you rest. Redeemed eternally? Total? R-E-S-T. R -E -S -T. <laughs> Redeemed eternally? Salvation totally. Redeemed eternally, salvation totally. But Satan is not going to do that. Go therefore now and work for there shall no straw be given you. Yet shall you deliver the tail of bricks. Ah. Oh brother man. God bless me with so much of work. Don't you understand? My bank ball and balance has increased. And I'm and become so rich. Wow. So what did you do? Did God get glory out of it? Mm, I don't know. Then it's from Satan. Okay? And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case. 
See, listen. And the officers of the children of Israel did see the soul that they were in evil case. Okay? They realized that they are under the deception of Satan. They are under the bondage of Satan. After it, it was said, He shall not minus or from your bricks of your daily task. Once they understood the work is increased and they have to finish it and not give time for God, they understood now, well, I see now that we are in the evil case. They saw it. Okay? They saw it. Now I'm going to give you another important thing very soon. This is exactly what you will do when I will keep preaching hard on it and when I will teach you the truth on it and you don't want to agree. It's not because you don't agree with the Bible. It's just because you want to satisfy your conviction that gives you conveniences of your own flesh and your own desire and your thought. The moment you are convinced what you are doing right, even if it is not according to God's word, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. Come down to verse 20. And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. Now, before I give you the last one. The first thing is, Satan will keep you busy in your work so that you don't get time to worship God. Satan will send you far from your church that you stay away from God's fellowship. And God's people. Satan will increase your work that you can't move to serve God but Satan. Okay? He'll give you so much wealth. Satan will increase the burden and he'll keep you under bondage. So that you can't move. You stay there. Now what happened? The people of Israel are tired now. So, oh no! We're not coming here because of this. So what they will do now? What are Christians going to do the moment their life becomes miserable? Because that's what's going to happen. As long as, you, as long as you will continue to be under the deception of Satan and not understand, this is exactly what will happen to Christians. Verse 21. Verse 20 says, And they met Moses. Who met the Moses? The people of Israel. Okay? The officers of the children of Israel. Okay? And they met Moses and Aaron. Who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. Now who is Moses and Aaron? They are the pastors. They are the messenger. They are the prophet. They are the, uh, they are the leaders of the people of Israel. So what is going to happen now? Verse 21. Get ready. And see if you, if, if you find yourself in it. And they said unto them. Who said? The people of Israel. The officers of the children of Israel. They said unto Moses and Pharaoh. I mean Moses and Aaron. And they said unto them, The Lord will look upon you and judge, because you have made a savor to be abode in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hands to slay us. <laughs> what Christians do is, they come against the pastors. That is exactly what Satan will do. He will put a fight between the church and the pastor. So once there is a tussle between the pastor and the church, what happens? It's broken. He breaks. So here the people of Israel are now accusing Moses and Aaron. The you are this, you brought us, you did this because of you. We are now under the sword of the Pharaoh. He's going to slay us now. You, 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 you. Instead of thinking, oh. When we needed some food to eat, when we were under famine, God brought us to Egypt. God promised He's going to bring us out. We should cry down to God and give time to God. But later even, the people of Israel keep on fighting against the man of God, Moses and Aaron. They're taking stone to kill him. They accuse him. They murmur against God. They murmur against God's people. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, this is exactly what Satan will do to destroy your faith. And you have to understand this and destroy devil's deception. These are the deceptions how he is going to destroy your faith 
and how he is going to destroy the church. He begins with small, small things. It ends up with a pastor, and then that destroys the unity in the church, and destroys the church. It begins with a work, more work. It begins with a work, scattered abroad work. It begins with work, a bondage under work. It begins with increased work, more work and more money. And then it ends up with fight with the pastor, a fight with the church elders, fight with the church members and destroy it. Satan's deception. Right? If everybody comes to church, whole things should be full today. Where are they? Under Satan's deception. Sunday is not a time for yourself. Sunday is a time for God. Right? Monday is not a time for yourself. Monday is a time for God. Tuesday is a time for God. Wednesday is the time for God. Thursday is the time for God. Friday is the time for God. Saturday is the time for God. And Sunday back is the time of God. I'm not saying come Monday to Saturday, let's come to church. I'm not saying that. But do you give enough time for God? Or are we just once time Christians, one day Christian in a week? Satan is in work in your life more powerfully if you have not realized what is happening in your life. If you're thinking you're smart enough, be it so. But if you're thinking, Lord, I need your help, please get right with God. Get out of the Satan's bondage because as, as long as you'll continue to be under the bondage of Satan, finally you're in trouble. So what you do? Put on the armor of God. Pray before you do anything. Put on the armor of God. Stand against the wiles of Satan. He is 24-7. He, he is working day-night in your life to take you away from God. Don't tell me you love God when you don't show it with your work. Okay? I've been in the ministry for many years. I meet people every day and I meet different types of people every day and I can real and I can understand by what you speak I can so it's not that I I'm getting convinced with what you say it's just that I'm tolerating with what you say just praying that God will open up your hearts and your minds I just keep everything back of my head Say, okay, okay, okay. You are under the bondage of Satan, under the deception of Satan. Come out, fight against it. Ask God to help you, that you may open up your eyes and see the evil case like the officers of the children of Israel saw that they were in the evil case. And put on the armor of God upon your life, so that you may stand against the wiles of Satan. Run not behind wealth, education, fame, and all those stuff. Because you will ruin your faith. That's what the Bible says. Pray, pray, pray. And seek in the word of God, the will of God. Search the scripture, what God is speaking to you. Give more time to God. Don't make him a beggar by putting a single coin on Sunday by coming to church. Let your Christian life be everyday Christian life. Amen? Amen. Now, I can understand certain some things, okay? Now, don't just think I'm making burden to your spiritual growth. But certain things I can understand, but certain things are not tolerated because some things, certain things are done in purpose which God sees everything and you can't fool God. You can fool some people sometime, but not all the people all the time. Amen? Amen. 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 Shall we pray now? And you cannot fool God at any time. And you cannot fool Pastor Lodson. Shall we pray?